so what we saw in the last class is sort of a preview we had ended with that sand molding process right we saw the different steps in the preparation of a sand mold we saw different properties that are required for the sand right adhesiveness cohesiveness refractoriness green strength and dry strength we started with four right how do you go about making a core and why why is it that a core is important right in it out from the last class these are these were the objectives for a core to have right objectives for using a core Okay, so let's start with the core seven. Okay, so that core sand is a special kind of molding sand, isn't it? Because the sand that you are using for make, uh, making the mold, right? The overall mold is different, and the core sand is it has to be a special kind because we have seen that. Uh, what are the requirements, right? That that sand should have the core sand to have, because it has all these uh, objectives to achieve, right? That it, it is it is more exposed to temperature and uh, it has to strengthen the mold, right? And uh, yeah, maybe maybe you should strengthen the mold, and uh, before the escapement of gases, all those were reasons, right? For the code to be to have for the code to have. So keeping the above mentioned objectives in view, the special consideration should be given while selecting the core set. The considerations would be as follows. As we, we have discussed that they're subjected to high temperature, right? And it should be highly refractory in nature, right? Should be able to sustain that temperature and uh, release. All those uh, gases. That's the second point. Permeability of the core sand must be sufficiently high so that it can allow those air gases to escape through the limited area of the core recesses generated by core plates. Right? Even those uh, small areas that have been developed, limited areas of those core recesses for the core plates to get in place. Right? Core sand should not possess such materials which will produce gases while they come in contact with mold equipment, right? So the uh, uh, ingredients or the constituents of those core sand should not have any uh, components that will contact. I mean, when the molten metal contact with those materials, it should not produce any sort of gases, right? So that that will lead to more more gases and. Uh, a difficulty in releasing of those gases when the plastic is solidified, right? So, who is this Rupa without a roll number? Really change your uh, username. Okay. So, so they should not contain materials which produce gases, right? And uh, should be collapsible in nature, as we discussed the collapsibility property for the molding sand. It should also be uh, in the sand that we are using to make a core. So, uh, it, 
it should disintegrate after metal solidifying because this property will ease the clearing of the casting, isn't it? So if it doesn't collapse, then it will have problem with clearing of the casting. Wherever those internal features are required, there will be this poor uh, sand available. And uh, then you would require some sort of uh, mechanical uh, dismantling, etc., to clean the casting. All right. Main constraints of the core sand are pure silica and a binder, right? Pure silica sand and the binder. Silica sand is preferred because of its high refractoriness, right? Majorly used for that reason. For high values of permeability, sand with coarse grain structure uh, distribution are used, okay? Because if the grain size increases, your refractoriness will increase, right? As I had discussed in the last class because of those gaps, etc. The main purpose of the core binder is to hold the grains together, impart strength and sufficient degree of collapsibility, right? As the name suggests, it binds uh, the grains together, either by giving it strength. Besides these properties needed in the core sand, the binder should be such that it produces minimum amount of excess when the mold metal is poured in the mold, right? Even for the binder. Although in general, the binder are inorganic as well as organic ones. For core making, the organic binders are generally preferred because they are combustible, right? And it can be destroyed by heat at high temperatures, thereby giving sufficient collapsibility to the course, right? So that heat, which is there from the molten metal, right? Would be received by this uh, binder, right? Organic binders, as, as, as is being discussed. So that it becomes combustible and therefore can be destroyed, isn't it? After receiving the heat, so that leads to the, uh, the required collapsibility that, that we are looking at, right? That we require. Doubt so far? Core and core box. You see, even those are required. Cores are compact mass of core sand that when placed in the mold cavity at required location with proper alignment does not allow the mold metal to occupy space for solidification in that portion and hence help to produce hollowness in the casting, right? As we have been discussing. The environment in which the core is placed is much different from that of the mold. In fact, the core has to withstand the severe action of hot metal which completely surrounds it, isn't it? Core are classified according to shape and position in the mold. So you see, just for that, uh, that was a quick review about core, right? Now the types of core you see depends on the application. These are all the different kinds of core, as you can see in the diagram. So you have this horizontal core, right? Very simple. You have that uh, orientation of casting. If that is the orientation you, can, you are looking at, then uh, this has to be the kind of core, horizontal core. Balanced core, right? Just so that you don't have that, uh, what do you call it? Uh, proper alignment, just for proper alignment, right? Drop core, right? And uh, hanging core, right? That is your mold cavity because it is hanging basically. You have some seats there so that can, uh, you'll have supports, but essentially, you see this the mold cavity is here, right? Which is shown in white. I hope you can see that. I'll try to fill that space and then remove that. Uh, so you can see, you see all this is your mold cavity. I hope that is clear. All this is mold cavity. So the score is basically hanging, right? That's why it's called a hanging core. And then core box, cores are made uh, made by means of core boxes, comprising of either single or in two parts. So the making of cores actually, isn't it? 
that's what we are looking at after looking at the types of cores uh, now we are now looking at the core boxes which are used for making these cores core boxes are generally made of wood or metal there are several types main types of core box are half core box dump core box split core box strickle core box right and left hand core box and loose piece core box so these are all the examples that we we'll see you see half core box as a name suggest just as you have that uh, co cope and drag uh, in patterns right in the types of pattern we have seen you have this half core box here when it comes to core uh, making so most common type two identical halves of a symmetrical core as as we as we would expect right symmetrical a symmetrical object we would use generally symmetrical core prepared in the half core box so let me here we will see the diagram it is the diagram yes you see that's a half core box so it was used to make this half core right and then another half you would make and then join them together place it in the mold uh, right for making that mold cavity so the two halves are pasted or cemented together after baking to form a complete core right that's why it's called a half core box dump core box similar in construction to half core box as shown in the figure cores produced do not require pasting rather they are complete by themselves the core produced in the shape of a slab it is called as a slab box or a rectangular box dump core box is used to prepare complete core generally cylindrical and rectangular box are prepared in this uh, boxes you see here they are complete by themselves you know to be uh, joined later so just like you are a single uh, pattern right so, yes, single pattern that was the first kind that we had seen as i remember so single piece pattern right that's what that was what the name i so here also in core making this dub core box is used to produce a core that is of one piece split core box made in two parts from the complete core by only one rabbit the two parts of the core box are held in position by means of clamps and their alignment is maintained by means of double pins and thus core is produced you see here this is the produced core and that is your core box double pins so that's your split core box to produce that uh, final sorry that final core right and then align with the help of these double pins if you have those internal features then they would need to be aligned isn't it so in here it is not so important but when it comes to any other internal features that you have of this uh, core right then you would have to have those alignment to be able to produce exact uh, features for this core right any doubt so far right and left hand core box sometimes the cores are not symmetrical right as i was mentioning in those previous ones if they are symmetrical then it is easy but when they are not symmetrical about this happening in such cases left and right right and left hand core boxes are used the two halves of a core made in the same core box are not identical and they cannot be pasted together right strickle core box this type of core box is where a core is in an irregular shape right so now we are coming from symmetrical to non symmetrical to very irregular right Uh, so the required shape is achieved by striking off the core strand from the top of the core box to the wooden piece called a strickle board. Strickle board. The strickle board has the same contour as that of the required core. I hope we have yes, we do have a diagram for that. You see here, strickle board. 
so that basically in that sweep pattern we had that uh, contour made and then we would sweep that pattern so that the sand would be removed based out of that contour here also same thing the strictly board has the same contour as that of the required board so you just sweep it right just to be able to make that those features inside right so this would have all the features the strickle board would have all the features and then you would basically drag it in the third direction thereby making this 3d uh, cavity right to be used as a core later right you see all these are uh, cores used for different features that we want okay now you see the allowances that uh, are required for the core box material using making core generally swell and increase in size right this may lead to increase the size of core so you see the allowances that were required for the pattern right just as you have that allowances there you have the allowances for the core on core box so larger core sometimes tend to become still larger this increase in size may not be significant in small core but it is quite significant in large cores and therefore certain amount of allowance should be given for the core boxes to compensate for this increase the cores right so it's not possible to lay down a rule for the amount of this allowance and this will depend upon the material used but it's customary to give a negative allowance of 5 mm per meter right so it's not a general rule depends on the material simply be simply because uh the coefficient of expansion or contraction is different for different materials but still uh, they have specified some customary negative allowance to be kept of 5 mm per meter right for making basically is carried on four stages sand core sand preparation core making core baking and core finishing right so you see uh, actually this is not there actually as per the syllabus we did not mention about core or anything about that but in the outcomes course outcomes you have that uh, design core core print and gating system in metal processes so that is why we are discussing uh, about this core and how to make it or the different steps involved in making a core right so let's go through it quickly right preparation of satisfactory and homogeneous mixture of core sand is not possible on ideal means therefore for getting better and uniform core course and properties using proper sand resistance and ldds the Core sands are generally mixed with the help of any of the following mechanical means, right? Namely, roller mills and sand core mixture using vertical revolving around time and horizontal paddle time mechanisms. It is basically to make the that core sand. Because of roller mills, the rolling action of the molding machine, right, along with the turning over action caused by the plows, gives a uniform and homogeneous mixture. So that roller mills. Uh, For core sand containing serial binders, whereas the core sand mixture is suitable for all types of core core binders. So you have those two uh, what do you call general ones, in the roller mills and core sand mixer, right? Using this mechanisms. So those machines are performing the mixing of core sand resistance more thoroughly, basically, just so that you have that core sand, right? And the core making process, core blowing machine. The basic principle of core blowing machine consists of filling the core sand into a core box by using compressed air. And so we are calling it core blowing, right? The velocity of the compressed air is kept high 
to obtain a high velocity of force and particles thus ensuring that they deposit in the remote corners of the core box like uh, you have that problem with ramming that you have to make sure that the sand reaches the corner here also using that uh, core blowing machine you are using compressed air so you have to ensure high velocity right so that the sand particles also achieve that high velocity and therefore they get deposited in all the corners of the core box right core ramming machines those are also provided by ramming core sands in the core boxes by machine with the principles of squeezing jolting and slinging so out of these three machines jolting and slinging are the most common for core making so you even have this in the molding sand preparation but uh, we did not discuss it as it was not in the syllabus so these are the methods for uh, making this uh, cores right core drawing machines the core drawing is performed with the core boxes have deep draws after having sand in the core box the core box is placed on a core plate supported on the machine bed Okay, a wrapping action of the core box is produced by vibrating vertical plate. This wrapping action helps in drawing of the core of the core box. So basically, that um, uh, removal, right? As we call that wrapping alloys, right? So in here also, because of that vibrating uh, motion, it helps us to draw the core of the core box. After wrapping the core box, the core is pulled up. Thus, leaving the core of the core plate, core plate, right? Core baking. Once the cores are prepared, they will be baked in a baking oven or furnace. Purpose being to drive away the moisture, right, whichever is present, and harden the binder, thereby giving strength to the core. So that removal of moisture will, uh, what do you call? Strengthens, strengthens the bond. So removal of that moisture, the water that is inside, will be taken out once you bake it. So that's core baking. Core drying equipment is usually of two kinds, namely core ovens and dielectric bakers. Right? These are used to uh, use for core drying. As for core finishing, they are finished after baking and therefore they are finally set. Before they are finally set in the mold, the fins, bumps, or other sand projections are removed from the surface of the mold by rubbing or filing. Right? Either you rub it or file it, all those projections which are there, which are undesirable, they are removed. Dimension inspection of the cores is very necessary to achieve sound casting, isn't it? Just as you have that uh, care taken in the preparation of a pattern you have the same kind of cares uh, uh, care when it comes to core so the dimensional inspection is important right so just as you uh, you do it for a casting for example or a pattern you do the dimensional inspection for the cores also because it directly leads to a sound casting right that is required Also, cores are also coated with refractory protective materials using brushing, dipping, spraying, uh, means to improve the refractiveness and surface finish, right? Uh, because that would help, as I said, to eradicate those defects, right? And uh, to help this, uh, to make this core refractory, as is mentioned here, right? And the surface finish also, because the internal features would have the surface finish. Of the core, so it is important that you give a good surface finish to the core also, so that would result in a good casting ultimately once the molded metal is core and solidified. The coating on core prevents the molded metal from entering into the core, right? So, if that molded metal enters into the core, then it would solidify there, it would have some uh, basically, some material would be inside the core, right. And once, once you reuse it, if, if it is a reusable one, then what happens is, it firstly, it will carry some weight. Secondly, 
that molded metal would solidify and if you are using it for another round the molten the second molten metal filling right is for the second uh, the casting for example if you are using the same board then it would melt it, it, it has the capability to melt this one the one already present inside the board so to prevent that uh, molten metal uh, all, to prevent all that happening, you have this coating that is given just so that it doesn't enter, right? Just as you have corrosion, uh, to avoid corrosion, you have some paintings being done, in a, in a, even in our general uh, examples, right? A routine daily life uh, examples, you have a lot of them where coatings are given to avoid rusting, just like your uh, door knobs and uh, all these uh, extra fittings, right? That are there. So, same is the case here. Bars, wires, and arbors are generally used to reinforce core from inside as per size of core, using core side. For handling bulky cores, lifting rings are also provided, right? So, this is, this is relevant for larger castings, right? Not for smaller ones. As is mentioned here, for handling bulky cores, lifting these are also provided for easy handling. And uh, even to strengthen or to reinforce core, right, we have these bars, wires, and arbors also installed, right? They are, uh, they, they are given while the core is being prepared. So you have that strength, right? Any doubts so far? Because we have finished uh, core making and uh, the, the topic of core. No doubts. Okay. You see, building furnaces. So we are discussing this because uh, our mortal metal, right? Uh, I'm sorry, the casting, right? For the casting to solidify, you have to pour it in a molten form. Initially, the material will be solid, right? Either be it uh, in the form of big logs of metals or in granular form. But it has to be melted, right? Before it can be put inside the whole cavity through all these gating system. It has to be melted. So we need to discuss the source or the means of melting. That is basically melting furnaces. So melting furnaces, what are there as per your syllabus, uh, are basically crucible melting in cupola operation. So we'll discuss these two kinds, right? There are many furnaces available, but uh, we'll discuss these categories. Before pouring into the mold, the metal has to be casted. Right? The metal to be casted has to be in the molten or liquid state. Furnace is used for carrying out not only the basic ore purifying process, but mainly it has to melt the metal also, right? 
So the that basic core from iron that is what is being discussed. Now a blast furnace performing the basic melting of iron core operation of electric iron cupola furnace is used for getting cast iron and electric arc furnace is used for remelting steel. Basically different uh, uh, furnaces for general applications. Different furnaces are employed for melting and remelting ferrous and non-ferrous materials. As I as I was explaining, right, based on the type of materials, that is one factor uh, to choose a particular furnace because the melting points are different. The reaction, uh, what do you call, uh, tendency is different, and uh, uh, what more factors could we have? Basically, temperatures, right? The ability to reach certain temperatures without causing any oxidation or uh, impurities, the chance of impurities or inclusions. We have uh, all these factors for the selection of furnaces. You see, what are the factors responsible for the selection of furnace? Right? We'll see it here. Consideration of initial cost, right? Cost is also an important factor. And cost of its operation, not just the initial cost, but the operational cost. Relative average cost of repair and maintenance, even that counts. Availability and relative cost of various fuels in the particular locality, right? The means of uh, firing, right? The different fuels and their availability and the cost. Because that depends on the geographical area, what fuels are available and what fuels are required for a particular furnace that you have designed, right? That the manufacturer has designed. Melting efficiency, in particular, speed of melting, how efficient is it? What time does it take to reach a particular temperature? Depends. That's where your melting efficiency. Composition and melting temperature of the metal, right? As I was talking about, that melting temperature. The composition that decides basically the temperature, isn't it? The degree of con quality control required in respect of metal purification or refining. Okay. So uh, the degree of quality control in respect of metal purification or refining, right? Quality control. That you uh, that is required. How uh, effectively are you 